Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me today as we discuss reading with a vision loss. My name's Steve Kelly, and I'm a vision rehabilitation therapist based in Southern Maine. In my role as a vision rehab therapist, I hold master's degrees in both blindness rehabilitation and rehabilitation counseling, and several national certifications, Certified Rehabilitation Counselor, CRC, Certified Assistive Technology Instructional Specialist, CATIS, and Certified Vision Rehabilitation Therapist, CVRT. But really, perhaps more importantly than any of the alphabet soup for this topic today is that I've experienced firsthand from many clients over the years and my own personal experience the challenges and isolation faced when we experience a vision loss and lose our access to information or just the sheer pleasure we get from reading. Because we often have very little experience with visual impairments or blindness before we experience it ourselves later in life, we often just assume that reading and many other daily activities will be out of our reach with vision loss, and nothing could be further from the truth. There are services and professionals available, often at no cost, to get people back to reading again, regardless of what their vision happens to be. Thanks for joining me today as we explore the topic of returning to reading with a vision loss. And I'd like to begin with a short personal story. Once upon a time, at an elementary school in Lincroft, New Jersey, there was a kid who just loved to read. He'd read anything. Books, magazines, the back of cereal boxes, you name it. It didn't matter. Reading just opened the world for him. He looked forward to the day the scholastic newspaper arrived, the monthly book club books came in their box, and most of all, the days when the bookmobile was parked out on the playground, and he could just walk in and look through all the brand new books. He eventually went on to college to get a degree in English and began working at a newspaper. One day in his 30s, this book lover was diagnosed with a progressive eye disorder called myopic degeneration, which he was told may get worse and could not be corrected. He feared the worst and imagined losing his vision and never being able to read again. He started rereading some of the classics again so he'd be able to remember them after he'd lost his vision. Okay, well, as you can see, the hero of the story was like so many people who find themselves with a vision loss later in life, afraid of losing the ability to read and having no clue of what alternatives and adaptations might be available for reading with a vision loss. Even as that kid in elementary school, I understood that reading was the key to understanding and participating in the world around me. And do you remember the ad campaign, Reading is Fundamental? Well, it really is, isn't it? So what happens when you can't read? The world suddenly grows smaller and you become more isolated at the very time you need to start learning new stuff again. Adapted daily living skills, maybe some tech skills so you can continue using the computer or tablet, or learn enough to become a better advocate for yourself. Not only that, but did you know that reading may actually help you live longer? Well, it's true. In fact, a 2016 Yale study found that reading books had a significant impact on living longer. As blindness professionals, we know that one of the first steps to getting back to reading is the National Library Service Talking Books programs, NLS Talking Books. It's free to anyone in the U.S. who has difficulty reading print, and a vision loss certainly qualifies. It's easy to get started, too. Just fill out an application and get verification of a vision loss from an eye doctor or vision rehab therapist. And you can get started with a phone call to the NLS at 888-657-7323 or just go to their website at www.loc.gov/nls. 
When you sign up, you receive a digital talking book player on loan that works using digital cartridges. Books and magazines read by professional narrators are recorded on these cartridges. Just plug it into the talking book player, turn it on, and listen to the book. It's that simple. Cartridges are mailed to and from the local state talking book library affiliate, and there's no charge to the patron. It's absolutely free. Even the return postage is paid. The talking book players are designed to be easy to use. The menu buttons are large and easy to see with labels that can also be read by touch. There's even an audio user's guide built right into the player. Just press and hold down the play button on the standard player or the info button on the advanced player and voila, you'll have more information than you knew existed on the talking book player. But hey, most of you knew that already, right? So what's the next step here? The digital talking book player can be a really powerful reading tool that isn't just limited to the thousands of books and magazines available from the National Library Service. What's really cool about the talking book player is that you can download books and audio files from all sorts of other places and copy them to a USB flash drive or even a blank NLS talking book cartridge. The USB flash drive is convenient because you can find these in lots of places. Even the local pharmacy may have them. To use a flash drive with the talking book player, make sure it doesn't come with software installed on it or just check with your local talking book library to find out which flash drives work best. That said, a blank NLS cartridge may be easier for the user because that's what they've been using all along, right? To transfer files back and forth from the computer to the cartridge, you're going to need a cable called a dongle that connects the cartridge to the computer. Plan ahead now because you won't find these cables or blank NLS cartridges at the local store. A great resource for both of these is Howell Mobility Products. That's H-O-W-E-L-L. -L, and you'll find them online at howellmobility.com or by phone at 586-558-8308. And you'll also find cartridges at one of the other low vision specialty companies like lssproducts.com, maxiaids.com, or even from Amazon. And of course, calling up the local NLS library affiliate, asking for the book or magazine, and having it sent through the U.S. Postal Service is probably one of the easiest methods to get books for a patron without computer skills or someone just getting restarted with their adapted computer skills. NLS also has a way to download these books and magazine, so there's virtually no wait at all, and it's called BARD, B-A-R-D, short for Braille and Audio Reading Download. With BARD, a patron can sign up with an online application at their website, which is nlsbard.loc.gov, calling the main NLS number mentioned earlier, or just calling their local state NLS affiliate. Once they get their username and password for BARD, users can log into the BARD website, search for audiobooks and magazines, even Braille files for those Braille readers, download these files to the computer, and then transfer them to a flash drive or a blank NLS cartridge. Searching the BARD website, though, does take a little bit of practice. And a great alternative, if you're using a Windows computer, is the free BARD Express software. And you'll find a link to that right on the BARD homepage. It makes downloading books and magazines so much easier than using the web interface. And for anyone already using an Android, iOS, or Amazon Fire tablet or smartphone, Bard Mobile is a free app that will make downloading and listening to books and magazines really, really easy. 
the first time the app opens, the patron puts in their username and password, and they can begin searching and downloading titles and then listening to them right from their tablet or smartphone. You won't be able to transfer books and magazines to a flash drive or NLS cartridge from these devices, though. That can only be done from the computer. Okay, so here's the thing, and you may already know this. Just because we can get someone signed up for something like Talking Books doesn't mean they're going to be diving right into audiobooks. After reading print visually for years, some folks may find it really difficult to read by listening. You might have to find out what it is that really motivates them. Ask a number of questions. Are they into books? Do they like magazines or podcasts? Are newspapers their things? What are their hobbies? Then get creative to find the content that'll get them excited to read again with some of these new techniques. Okay, so you've got your blank cartridge or USB flash drive in hand. So where are you going to find this content that's going to make reading fundamental again for someone? You may have to go beyond what you're going to find at the NLS Talking Books. The NLS Talking Book Player recognizes three of the major audio file types, WAV, W-A-V, MP3, and a less frequently used format, AMR, WB+. All you need to do is download these files to the blank cartridge or flash drive, and they can be played on the Talking Book Player. And here's a tip. Once they're copied to the cartridge or flash drive, files play in the alphanumeric sequence that you put them in. So if you do have a specific order you want them to play in, just rename the files using numbers or letters at the beginning of the file name to order them in the way you want them to be played. One of the things I heard again and again from clients is how much they missed reading the newspaper. So this is as good a starting point as any. The National Federation of the Blind, NFB, has a newspaper and magazine reading service called NFB Newsline, and it's available in most states. Like talking books, there is no charge to the client for the services. All that's needed is an application and verification of a vision loss. If the client is already a patron of NLS Talking Books, this will work for verification. Once they've registered, subscribers can listen to a huge selection of local and national newspapers and magazine. Users can also listen over the phone using the dial pad to choose different menu items and sections in the paper to listen to, and no smartphone is required. This can all be done with a standard landline. Newspapers can also be downloaded to an NLS cartridge or flash drive and read with the talking book player. Now, for some readers, this might be even easier. Think about it. An NLS cartridge loaded with a couple of favorite newspapers may be a great demo to get someone back into that local newspaper again after a vision loss. You can check out Newsline at NFB newslineonline.org or just call them at 866-504-7300. Newspapers and magazines on Newsline are read with an electronic voice using text-to-speech, so basically a computerized voice does the reading. Although there are several voices to choose from and lots of settings to change the voice rate, pitch, and volume, one of the frequent complaints people have of audio services like Newsline is that they use computerized voices and that the voices aren't as good as listening to a human reader. Fortunately, there are other alternatives you can try. For example, radio reading services have long been available in many communities for individuals with a vision loss. Originally, these services were broadcast over a radio frequency 
that could be tuned into special radio receivers or picked up on the TV's secondary audio channels. Now, many radio reading services broadcast over the internet and archive their programs so they can be downloaded. These radio reading services use volunteer readers to read newspapers, magazines, and books, so the narration may be more pleasant for some listeners. Here's an example of the selections available from just one radio reading service based in Massachusetts, Talking Information Center. From their website at ticnetwork.org, they offer archived audio files of USA Today, The Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, New York Times, and Boston Globe. These archives are not the complete newspaper, however, like you'd get with NFB Newsline, but they'll certainly give the listener news in a format that might be a little bit easier for them to listen to. In addition to these sections, there are also many other local newspapers from Massachusetts available, as well as a number of magazines and books. And the Talking Information Center is just one radio reading service. For a great list of these services, check out the directory at the International Association of Audio Information Services. And this is also known as the IAAIS. And you'll find the listings on their website at IAAIS.org. Now, here's just a quick aside. With the popularity of the smart speakers like the Amazon Echo and the Google Home, a number of these same radio reading services can be streamed live, just like a radio station over the smart speaker. Here are just a couple of examples you might want to try. Hey, Google, play Sight into Sound radio reading service on TuneIn. Alexa, play OWL radio reading service on TuneIn, or try the one we mentioned earlier. Hey Google, play Talking Information Center on TuneIn. For a more complete list, you want to check out the article on lowvisiontech.com titled Radio Reading Services on Smart Speakers, or go to the tunein.com website and search for Blind Reader Services. Now keep in mind that tuning into these services with a smart speaker is a lot like listening to any other radio station. If you want to know when a certain program, like a magazine, newspaper, or book, is being read, you'll want to check out their schedule ahead of time. It's also worth noting that many of these radio reading services might still offer radio tuners for listeners in their immediate broadcast area. Some also offer service over the telephone, even a landline. So don't assume you're out of luck if you don't have a computer to download files or Wi-Fi for one of the smart speakers. Another great place to find some terrific content to download is... A-I-R-S-L-A. That's Airs L-A. And you'll find them at www.airsla.org. And they also have an app for the iPhone or iPad in the App Store. Their selections include magazines, some national newspapers, podcasts, and seminars. So in addition to periodicals like AARP, Reader's Digest, and selections from the Wall Street Journal, just to name a few. There's also some great selections of NPR programs and informative lectures from the Foundation Fighting Blindness, the Council of Citizens with Low Vision, and many, many more. The archives on Airs LA are pretty extensive, so you're likely to find informative audio files for a wide variety of tastes and interests. Well, NLS Talking Books has an incredible selection of books. There are several other sources worth mentioning here. Bookshare.org has a collection of books that's now approaching 1 million titles. Bookshare is a subscription-based service which, like NLS, requires proof-of-print disability to use. While 
most of their collection consists of ebooks in electronic text that can be downloaded and read on a computer, tablet, or a smartphone. Some of their titles are also available as audio files that can be easily played on a talking book player. Project Gutenberg, like Bookshare, primarily offers text based ebooks. However, some of their titles are now available as audio files as well. Project Gutenberg is on the web at Gutenberg, and that's spelled G U T E N B E R G dot O R G. This is free and open to anyone, so all 60,000 of their titles are in the public domain, which just means that they're out of copyright. So there's no need to verify a print disability to download books from Project Gutenberg. It's a great place to find copies of some of those terrific older classics. So as we saw from our opening story of The Book Lover, a vision loss acquired later in life can really disrupt someone's ability to access information and just the sheer pleasure of reading. Ironically, this often happens at a time when it's really needed even more to learn about new skills, assistive technology, services that might be available, and self-advocacy. Not only is reading fundamental at any age, with the right tools like an NLS talking book player and some great content, it's also accessible to virtually anyone, regardless of vision loss. Steve Kelly. His email address is lowvisiontech, T-E-C-H, at gmail.com.